Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another video, or should I say, welcome back to the first podcast, the first episode of In the Box. It is going to be me and my former intern, former MBOT intern <laughs> turned team member, Matt Magadi. Matt, tell, tell people, tell people about yourself. Uh, you know, I've been I've been uh, helping Mike out <laughs> behind the scenes for a while, and uh, I'm happy to be on. So I'm ready to get started. And he he is a Rangers, Yankees, correct. Giants, I mean, I'm forgetting one. Right Nets. Now. Nets. He's Nets. like the exact opposite of me. Like all, all the teams that I hate outside of like the Hornets fan instead of a Knicks fan. <laughs> but yeah, there's going to be some beef on this. And yeah, we're just going to be ripping this probably like once a week for the most part to start out. Maybe more once like the season starts to really get out of the underway. Not overly hyping this up considering the last time I started a podcast. It only lasted like 13 episodes when I did my own. So there's no big bombastic like <laughs> video announcing all that shit. We're just going to talk about hockey, talk about the stuff that has gone down recently because we actually have had some news that gone da- that has gone down and the season is obviously starting like you're probably watching this like mere hours before the start of the season. So, let's get into it. Up first, Jeremy Swayman has signed an extension at 8 years, 8.25 million dollars. I'll, I'll throw it to you first. What do you think? I mean, I think that's pretty perfect market value for him. I would say uh you know, he's going to be 34 by the time it ends. So, I mean, I feel like it's a good deal. I don't know. I feel like it was important for them to get it done now rather than wait till the middle of the season. Then there's trade rumors, how they're doing. Um, so I think it was important for both sides. It, it feels like it, it took too long. Like, it yeah. almost feels like it took so long. They're, ta- they're talking, you know, there are discrepancies in dimes at this point. So yeah. I feel like eight by, uh, 8.25 is pretty pretty good for both sides yeah. yeah it's it's definitely like just pathetic from the franchise perspective to <laughs> yeah. having having it go public like that but it, it was always going to be like eight years around eight mm-hmm. million dollars it's ridiculous that boston initially tried to say like four years 6.25 yeah. million dollars but i think when looking at swayman some people say like he, he doesn't have this longest track record ever which is fair to a degree but even still he's like 25 years old he yeah, has exactly. played like 130 games at this point yeah. hasn't played 55 60 games in a season but like the goal, the goalies that have had the track record of him to start in his career at age 25, there's like not a lot. And especially coming off by far his probably best year yet, considering the fact that Burns weren't like a record breaking team this season and he carried them throughout he the playoffs. The starter, yeah. I don't know how people are acting like this is the end of the world. No, and I would say it's also like you you think about the guys who are getting eight year contracts at like goalie, like Shesterkin's, you know, what, 31. It's like yeah. Swayman's 25. So yeah. it's totally, he, he's not even in his prime yet, yeah. hopefully. So. I feel like that was... Yeah, and you, and you hear all the mumbo-jumbo about the cap going up, but, like, it is true when looking at it. He's only, I think, like, the fifth highest-paid guy next season, like... And he's arguably, like, the fifth best yeah, goalie in yeah, hockey. So yeah. it's like, it's not even, like, right now he reset the market and is going to be, like, the third or fourth highest and he's not quite there. Like, even if he's just a good starter for this entire deal, like, top 11 through 12 mm-hmm. in the NHL, when looking at the guys that are going to get paid down the line, p- people just don't see the, the full picture. I think hopefully we're going to see it down the line, and especially... Once Shesterkin, who we're probably about to talk about, once he gets his $10, $11 million, $12 million, mm-hmm. Jake Ottinger gets paid next summer, I think that the people are going to look at this and be like, yeah, $8.25 million is more than fair for Swayman. So let's let's change that. He's a Ranger fan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What is the most that you would give up for Igor Shesterkin in terms of AAV? So I would say... I mean, I don't think it's going to get to this point, but I would say $12 million a year. Twelve. You'd would, go to I, 12. I would go to 12. I would go to 12. Just because... <laughs> track, I mean, the track record since he's been yeah. up in the NHL, plus the playoff numbers, obviously, are outstanding. And it's like, the Rangers at this point, with the roster currently constructed, it's like, how many more shots at it do you have? Yeah. So it's like, if you're gonna, if they're possibly in the gutter in four years anyway, it's like, what's what's the big deal if you're giving them an extra million dollars? Yeah. I don't think it's going to get to that point. If I had to predict it, I would say it's like 11, 11.25 maybe, but yeah. I, would, I, would, I would go to 12. Yeah, dude, I think what people, and you see the Ranger fans now being like, Swayman's only getting 8.25, yeah, like yeah, last totally year, different. Swayman was better and, in the regular and season, better in the playoffs. Yeah, too. yeah like, that's, so I, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. Like, There's such a difference between the UFA yeah. and RFA. Like, if, if you guys aren't offering him at least $10 million, he's probably walking, considering yeah. the fact that, yes, he'd only be able to get a seven-year deal, but somebody would give him like 12 12.5. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On the open They're, market. Think about, think about yeah. the Minnesota Wild. Like Their goaltending has been abysmal last year, and Phil Gustafson's not like the answer, and they have that money coming off. Yeah. They would throw a fucking bag. There'd Shesterkin and Kaprizov, yeah. they would throw a metric bag to get Shesterkin, so... They're going to have to give up a lot. They're going to have to reset the market. I don't know if I would go to 12, just because that is like so much more than Sorokin. That's so much more than Swayman. Hellebuck as well. But I think, yeah, I think 10.7 to 11.25 is like 
probably where I would end up landing. Technical difficulty there. I wouldn't go to 12 just because, again, that that seems like such a resetting of the market and when looking at Shesterkin, unless he like, if he plays fantastic this regular season, they're going to have to if he is in like Vesna conversations. If you start out the year and he's only hovering around like a 9-10, I think he's going to lose some uh, leverage. But yeah, when looking at it, it's so weird with this Shesterkin stuff and I keep on saying this, how like, you look at an Austin Matthews, you look at a Mitch Marner, people scream about how like they're not worth that money because yeah. they don't show up in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that fucking shows up in the yeah, playoffs. Yeah. Like he is the definition of like a playoff performer. It's so weird. I understand that they haven't won a Stanley Cup with Igor Shesterkin. It's not because of him. Yeah. It's it's not because he's going to take up an extra six million dollars of cap space. It's because of Jacob Truba. It's because Arthur Panarin maybe isn't built mm -hmm. for the playoffs. This guy, they might have like one playoff series win exactly, yeah. if it wasn't for Igor Shesterkin. That's that that's where I just see this disconnect of people playing like such hardball with the guy that the last three years regular season postseason has been by far the best. Going the entire NHL, it's like not up for debate. And it's, uh, you look back at the series they lost, you know, Florida and uh, Tampa before, and it's like, and I guess even New Jersey, but that was a little different. But the Florida and Tampa ones, it's like they just got massively like, yeah. outplayed. Like it wasn't Shesterkin's fault. And it's like, if they do let him walk, where, what is, what is the next yeah. move? Like who, who are they going after? It's like, again, they, they have a win now kind of window. So it feels like, yeah. If you if 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 you're gonna let him walk, you like have to trade him at the deadline. Or exactly. Like, that. Yeah. like you need to get like you can't get a nothing decent for goalie him. back. Yeah. He's like no offense, Jonathan Quigg is was great this year in like short like stints. He's not like can't play. You, you'd, have to, games, you'd have to. Games, like, yeah. uh, who's their one prospect? Like Dylan Garrard or yeah, something like that. Grand, like yeah. he had like a 900 in the AHL. I, maybe he could be something, but like to assume that he's gonna come Step in and be in this and just absolute stud yeah. is like ridiculous. So I think I think you pay him, but if not, like. You should have traded him this summer if you knew yeah. that like he's gonna stick put. I think that the twelve million is like that's the initial ask. So he even asked for nine point five yeah, million dollars. Go like, yeah. That's gonna go down. But yeah, like playing hardball with such a franchise superstar, by far not by far the best player, but like their most important player come playoff yeah. time is just like ridiculous in my opinion. And maybe it's just the New York sports media is just like takes it's it to classic. that next level. Yeah, and, and, and when you see a guy like Jalen Brunson in the NBA, like take 10 million dollars less per yeah. season then like apply like, to that oh they should take the he don't it. brunson's still making like 40 million dollars so yeah. that, that's like not it's a good totally example like versus sport. sterkin but yeah and also they look at sorokin who is like sterkin's buddy but when looking at it yeah i think you pay him someone like jake ottinger though that's gonna be very interesting like negotiation this throughout this entire season when looking at it because he's been pretty inconsistent not inconsistent he's been good basically every single year at least average but last year was a little bit down what do you think that his contract would look like uh, I, mean, it, I guess it just uh, it all depends on what he does this year i feel like yeah. so you know he's had some spurts where he looks like he could be that elite level talent and then he's had some spurts where it's like is this really the guy and it's like yeah. that kind of inconsistency when it comes to you know contract year so i feel like it all depends you know how he plays this year and then it's like okay let's start negotiating this contract so how far yeah. it takes him in the playoffs. I mean, they have a win now roster too, right? So yeah. whatever he kind of does in the playoffs and the regular season, I mean, they're going to be a playoff team no matter probably how, unless he's like really bad, but once it comes playoff time, how far can he get you? And can he take them, you know, to that cup? And yeah, I think, I, I don't know what the number is going to be. I like, think right. Yeah. If, if I'm him, I'm definitely not signing after he had like a nine Oh five on like a, a really good team. It wasn't even like, he be carried. Yeah, yeah. Like Soros last year at a nine Oh five, like Nashville really wasn't that good. Like, he probably should have been better last year. He had a 919 in 2023. So like he can do that. He can perform at that level and has been very good at the playoffs. So I think it's gonna be a situation where like he's gonna have to kind of earn it this season. Exactly. Right now, he'd probably get like an eight-year seven, seven point two five million dollars. But like if he has a good season, that's why Dallas maybe probably just like should lock him up right yeah, now. Because yeah. if he does have like a Swayman level season in like 60 games next year, that could legitimately be like 8.5 because he, he has played the last three years being exactly. their full-time starter and stuff like that and has had deep playoff runs. So it's it's kind of playing with fire, but I think they're probably going to settle somewhere around like 8, 8 million. It's also Texas, so they don't have the state income tax. So that definitely factors in a little I bit. I guess it, does, it depends on Igor too. I mean, yeah. I feel like that does kind of, yeah. you know, he says, oh, Igor got 11 and a half, yeah. you know. I, I, I had similar numbers this year. You know, I should get that. So yeah. I think it just, we just have to see how it plays out throughout the year. But he'd be a fool, yeah. I think, to try and sign right now because he's going to lose yeah. out on money. I mean, he, yeah, he's no. got to bet on I, himself I think, a I think bit. at the bare minimum this season, he's going to have like an idle five. Yeah. Literally, sure. like that'd be like worst case scenario. Like mm -hmm. if that, that would be a bad season objectively, I think that he's going to post like a nine, 13, nine, 14 yeah, and get back on track and probably get paid. And when you're looking at Dallas, like, they don't really have to nickel and dime like mm -hmm. a New York Rangers per yeah, se, exactly. considering the fact that they have Robertson at $7.75 million. It's only for like two more years at this point. Heiskanen, 8.45. I 
Hints, 8.35. Harley, they just got for fucking $4 million a piece. So, like, they'll have the money to spend. It's not going to be, like, harsh negotiations. Yeah. But it'll be interesting to see if they do. Another goaltender, we're just ripping through the goalie market at this point. Not going to spend too much time on this one. <laughs> but Lena Solmark also is an unrestricted free agent. I think that one's going to be very interesting, considering the fact that he's getting up there in age. But if he pops off in Ottawa, I could see him getting yeah. eight. Eight point five million dollars. It's gonna depend on how he plays in Ottawa. Yeah. We'll see what that's but, like. But but like if he balls out in Ottawa, they're yeah, gonna, gonna have, they're fat, gonna have no choice yeah. but to fucking pay up. But we're, let's get back on track because the season has begun. It has gotten underway. The Devils and Sabers kick things off over in Czechia. The New Jersey Devils won both games. What, what did you watch any of the game? What did you think of it? Yeah, I I mean I watched um I watched most of the second game and then the first game I I watched a little, but it just felt like. The Devils looked like the much yeah. better team. I mean, you don't want to overreact to, to two games and you know against the same team and you're in Prague and whatever. But the Devils look like if you're just basing an overreaction on them that they're back, yeah. and the Sabers look like they have some things to yeah. work out a little bit. Yeah, um, no, you, you definitely can't massively overreact. It's just like it is crazy how like in that situation was Lindy Ruff, former team yeah, versus exactly, current yeah, one, it, and you saw some of the defensive breakdowns, some of the two or two two on Lindy ones know, that happened right, with yeah. Lindy Ruff. So yeah, it's I wasn't a fan of that hiring when it went down. Still, again, I think the New Jersey Devils are one of the best teams mm -hmm. in the entire NHL, so yeah. you can't massively overreact. And, and Devin Levi like kept him in that second game awesome. for so long. Yeah. So like, if he can be bounced back, what would you say is like your one through ten? One through ten, what is your level of concern for the Buffalo Sabers? I mean, I would say I'm going to say like a three, only because three. only because the way I the way I look at it is for making the playoffs. I'm not just okay. saying like like your preseason expectations. Okay, then maybe it's like a five. Right. I mean, their worst fear is kind of in the first two games were kind of like you, know, you scored Realized, two goals yeah. and it's like you're not getting this this goal scoring that you kind of want. And it's like, ugh. but again, it is against the Devils and it is early. But Lindy Ruff, I mean. And not a lot of people like that hire. I don't yeah. like it. They were, they were fucking playing on the nostalgia hits with that one. Yeah. Um, annoying. Might have so. been a team that could have taken a shot on somebody, you know, tried to. Yeah, get like a young, yeah, uh, rather than uh, up and coming. Rather than a guy who's been there for how long? I mean, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I'd say a five then. Based I on think, a I think I'm probably at like a six. Okay. Maybe so, a seven. So. I was a little bit lower on them coming into the season, but if, if we're going to get the Lindy Ruff defensive system that we got yeah. last year in New Jersey, with the inex it's not even like the Buffalo is like an experienced group. Like they need it's, they need to teach, they need to coach power Byram to get back on track in terms of developing and taking decor, that next though. step. Like it can be, yeah, but when you got Lindy Ruff back there, it yeah, might be exactly. well, it might exactly. be a little bit uh, risky. What what from a devil's perspective, what what, what do you think, Borsell? Oh, they looked awesome. I mean what I mean yeah. uh Markstrom, I mean, it'd be awesome for them if they really have a goalie now because it feels like it's been so long since they've had a, you know, I guess they had Vanacek, who was okay. It was like, yeah. Markstrom just looked really good. I mean, he made a, an incredible save, too. Um, and even Jake Allen played fine. So, I mean, that's one thing. And then the you, tandem, yeah, the yeah, tandem yeah. might be even more important than. You knew, I mean, I feel like you know, with, I feel like the goalie is the biggest question. I feel yeah. like you know they have a great forward group. Their defensive core is crazy depth. And it's yeah. just like, Sheldon Keefe is kind of a proven coach. You know what you're kind of going to get out of him to me. So as long as Markstrom and Allen are fine, they're yeah. going to be top of the NHL. I, I thought think. I thought the Devils looked like kind of like their 2023. Like they were high flying yeah. without like the defensive lapses causing yeah. the two on ones, yeah. three on twos. I was very impressed with what I saw from them. And yeah, just when looking at it, as long as they can get like decent goaltending, similar to like exactly. the Ottawa Senators, yeah. I think they're going to cruise to a playoff spot. Not so like yet. for me, for me, this doesn't change anything for no. me for the Devils. It's like, yeah. I expected them to get at least three out of four points from the Sabres for them to dominate that second game like they did. Definitely was encouraging to a degree, but really nothing really to take away from the Devils' perspective once they get back to North America and actually play some serious teams. We'll more so dive into it. In terms of PTO's waiver wires, we had an interesting wave go down yesterday. Pierre Engvall, six years left, $3 million on waivers, heading to Bridgeport. I guess I'll just this handle this one. Yeah. Yeah, this bit, <laughs> we'll yeah. talk about Justin Hole in a bit. But uh, when looking at Pierre Engvall, yeah, that, that contract is just so dumb in the moment. I tweeted it out. It was really dumb in the moment. Three weeks later, or th 15 months later, it is three times as dumb, which is like really astonishing to do considering the fact, yeah, in the moment, first year, he only had 10 goals, 14 assists for like 24 points in 75 games was not that good. And yeah, six years left. $3 million, and for a guy that's in the bottom six role on an Islanders team that wants to play physical, and he's the exact opposite of that, it's pretty bad. What, what, what do you think about Pierre Engvall? I, I mean, it's just, it's the same, I mean, it's just, a lot of these teams do this where they maybe 
don't give out as much money and they go for the years and it's like now you're just stuck. Yeah. Now, now you're just on the hook for for six years and it's like what are the odds somebody claims them yeah. off waivers? Like yeah, yeah. Right? I saw some speculation that Columbus might just to get to like the cap floor or something like that. <laughs> if he had a year or two, I could maybe buy that. But like yeah, six, six years. years. Are they really like do like that? when Fantilli and uh, yeah. Lindstrom are in their prime, they have to deal with it. Pierre Engvall making three million dollars, yeah. so, attach a pick to so get now, rid of him. So now you have this contract playing in the AHL and it's like oh yeah, my God. yeah. I'm sure and I'm, I'm sure he'll be back up. Yeah, he's he's gonna come up. This isn't like he's getting bought out like yeah, tomorrow like it, yeah. but um yeah dude it's, it's like, like a and, and i do like the idea of like them holding him accountable like just because he's making this money you see some teams like just because they're making the money like they're in the everyday lineup they have to play it, it yeah. is good to see that but it's like also I, I, patrick Wall obviously was not the coach when he was giving out this contract so like he had no input on it but yeah for lou lamorello to be willingly like a year in this guy can't beat out well, oliver walsh from for a fucking roster spot it's definitely going to lead to some concern for my New York. Islanders. I do agree, though, that it's a lot of teams, uh, you know, have the the sunk cost fallacy. Where yeah. it's like we already yeah, exactly. them, we have yeah, to yeah. play them. Where it's like at least the Islanders can own up to their mistake. Yeah. And it's like this dude isn't good, and he's making this kind of money. It's like we just can't play him. Like we just can't play him. So I don't know. Yeah. It's, yeah. We, we need we need we need Lou to call in a favor like fucking Barkley Goudreau, Chris uh, Chris Drury, oh, yeah. and Mike Crier, former yeah. teammates. Yeah, we need a, a Lou Lamorello, like former player that's now a he's general got manager. Yeah, somewhere. Like, I mean, fucking... he's been all around. So. <laughs> we got to somehow get that done. Get Pierre Engvall off our team, and it really sucks for me because like the Leafs fans tried to warn me, and he was really good once he got yeah. traded. Like him, Nelson, and Paul Murray were like by far our our best line after that trade, and then he gets paid, and then he. I was, I was told he was lazy, so he got traded. That's what happened. Had a wake up call, needed to show up. A team, he had some revenge on his mind and shit like that. Then he gets paid. Once you get the contract, now he sometimes, yeah, that's it. They just, you know, they fight hard for that contract. Yeah. Which which it. one do you think is worse, his or Mayfield's? I would say his. I mean, at this yeah. point, so Mayfield's like, is five hundred k more, and he hasn't been able to stay healthy. But yeah, Pierre Engvall is. I feel like Mayfield, you at least have some hope still. Like, do you? Yeah, have- he he can bounce back. He yeah. was he was a legit like good bottom pair defensive defenseman for like three years before that's what I'm that. Saying. Like, there's some hope there. The problem still. is he's 31 now, so that's a little bit concerning. Yeah, that's true. But when like, <laughs> but Engvall, it's like now he's in the NH- uh, AHL, so it's yeah, like, it's really. Just- I hope he puts up like monster he numbers. He goes off. He's like the best player. Like wins the Calder Cup, the Bridgeport uh, fucking Islanders are tearing it up. But yeah, also Justin Hole placed on waivers eyes were playing strikes yet again he has two years left at 3.4 million dollars i'm i'm a little bit i mean i guess they're playing some of their young guys up at yeah. the nhl level to start out but when looking at it not good not good for the eyes are playing someone that they brought in to kind of bolster there and gave him some serious not serious money but 3.4 million dollars what do you think about that another former leaf that leafs fans hated so maybe the leafs know what they're talking I about i feel like this one is more this one might be kind of just to i don't know I feel like he's going to be back up like soon. I don't. I don't know. I. I don't know. It just feels like they're kind of sending him a message. I mean, last yeah. year he was hurt, right? So, um, mm-hmm. I don't know. It just feels like at, at least it's not Engvall where you have six years. You're only on. The yeah, yeah. It's only two more. years, and Detroit doesn't have like as much pressure to win now. Yeah, exactly. I do feel like he'll probably get called back up and be whatever. But yeah, know. they just have a bunch of fucking like journey, man. like Ben Trot. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, what Petrie. they've been doing. And yeah, so. Oli Mata is still like cooking in that defense score. Who else? Gustafson, former Ranger that they brought oh, yeah, in, they yeah, brought in Gus like Bus. they have the yeah, most yeah. average, like and he Hall kind of fits the bill, yeah, like with that kind of group. So I just feel like I don't know, maybe he's a scapegoat or whatever, whatever, whatever the reason is for doing it. Yeah, I feel like he's gonna be back up. And yeah, they also sent down Casper Danielson. Like they're gonna have a pretty fucking sick team. That's my Calder Cup pick. You, the people call me a wings hater. Grand Rapids, oh, okay. Grand Rapids yeah. Griffins are gonna win the fucking Calder Cup. Can't but, hate on the AHL team. Yeah. But uh, next up, we are gonna talk about some underrated and overrated teams heading into next season you want to go first with an un- underrated we'll go underrated first okay so my underrated team the way the way i'm looking at underrated is kind of the way you always describe it because i feel like when you call people overrated on your instagram or whatever people are always saying you think they suck yeah but it's really no just the you're lower you're lower you're lower on the average so yeah. yeah so this underrated team i would say i don't know if they're gonna be a playoff team but i'm gonna pick the washington capitals and the reason I'm picking the Washington Capitals is because I know their underlying metrics last year were garbage and all this stuff yeah. was garbage, but they did make the playoffs. And I feel like every prediction or ranking I see has yeah. basically the Islanders shoot in ahead of them, the Penguins shoot in ahead of them. And it's Penguins? Like, yeah, I feel like I have seen a lot hey, of It's Penguins. like 50-50. Yeah, yeah. Pe- people bounce people it back on them. Dubas. Yeah, so it's like, I feel like, you know, they get Thompson and they have Lingren. That's a pretty good goalie tandem. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully Ovi has a better first half of the year. Um, I've, I don't know. I don't think they're going to be like a hundred point team, but I think you know they'll be in that wild card they conversation. Are in, they for are a in while. your playoff team. I... Yeah. 
Yeah, all right. So what do, what do you got over here? For, the for my underrated team, I think a team that could surprise some people. I don't have them in the playoffs, but I think the Seattle Kraken actually, like, that's they're just right. a very balanced team. Like, you know okay. what I'm saying? Like, nothing wows you, but that's kind of what we thought heading into the 2023 season as well. It wouldn't surprise me if they make the playoffs, especially with LA now dealing with some injuries. If they mm-hmm. finished ahead of Vegas, that wouldn't really surprise me. Really? I, I've already said 9,000 times, like, my, I guess my actual pick would be like the Anaheim Ducks or something like that. I think you're going to take a massive step. But a team that I haven't really talked that glowingly of, I keep on looking at the Seattle Kraken, and, and like you look at their overall depth, they're fully three lines deep. Do they have like probably a bottom five, like top first line in the NHL potentially? But their second line is very good. Their third line is very good. I think Matty Beniers is going to get back on track at least to what he was in prior years. I think Brandon Montour probably going to be like an albatross contract towards the end of it. But next year, adding a legit top pair offensive defenseman on top of already having a guy yeah. that I'm very high on and Vince Dunn, it's going to come down to Joey Decord if he's like legit. And not even like as good as last year. He had like a 916 last year. If you can give him like 910 and Grubauer can be yeah. a 903 back there with a new coach, uh, Dan Bilsma. I'm, I don't know if I'm botching that name, but uh, yeah, yeah uh, a guy that has a lot of experience. I think they can be a decent team. I still don't like Ron Francis' overall vision with the Seattle Kraken. He's given out some horrible deals, but I think heading into next season, they're a team that I'm not really seeing get any playoff buzz for the most part. And again, I technically don't even have them in the playoffs, but it would not shock me one bit if they ended up making the playoffs. What do you mm-hmm. think about that? Yeah, so I I agree. I mean, I just think that the goalie situation in Seattle could be kind of... Yeah, shitty. Joey I mean, Decord is definitely weird. Like, he was nothing really in Ottawa. When he was young, he was still pretty young, but, like, he really came out of nowhere. I'm not saying he's, he was legitimately, like, a top 10 goalie in the NHL last year. Not mm-hmm. saying that is for sure going to happen, but I think he can be average. I think he can be average in Grubauer... Can he just be like an okay backup? We, uh, the, the days of him even like Groove attempting hours. like Groove the back, yeah, yeah, the attempted backup. Like I just need twenty five games <laughs> yeah, of like me. nine, of like eight ninety eight oh, okay. would be fine. So your would expectations, be like, yeah, low. would be like perfectly so you fine. Think gonna I don't put up need some much. Goals, then. Yeah, I mean, again, I just think that they're they're a lot of depth, a lot of fucking scoring depth. I think Burakovsky fully healthy, Jordan Eberle, Veneers obviously bouncing back. Who am I missing? Yanni Gord, Chandler Stevenson, horrible contract. But he's he could still a he could go for fifty five yeah. points next year. And they're only two years removed from yeah. you know, beating Colorado. And, yeah, like you know, and that was and, and that was with oh, they they did shoot the shit out of the puck, but I think that their that their forward core honestly is arguably better than it was that back then. But when looking at it even that 2023 team had horrible goaltending. So like mm-hmm. the fact, if you can get some of that goal scoring back on track with better goaltending, I see no reason why they can't be a playoff team. Again, I'm a coward. I picked like the Jets you didn't in, go in bold, the yeah. wild. Because I'm also very high in the Minnesota Wild. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't fully pick them, but you could see they're, they're a team like I'm seeing nobody hype up. Mm-hmm. Like nobody at all. And at this point, I would pick them to be over the LA Kings. Maybe that's a little bit of reaction to the injury. I would, I'm trying to think who in the central, definitely over the St. Louis Blues. I don't know. The West is going to be an absolute bloodbath for some of those final wildcard spots. And I think the Seattle Kraken are going to be playing important hockey down the stretch. And Ron Francis kind of has to. Not saying he's going to get fired, but like if they miss the playoffs by a decent amount again, like the hot seat is definitely going to come on for him. But switching it up to underrated, no, overrated. Overrated. I already did underrated. Overrated. Now we're going to be a little bit of haters. Who's your pick? Um, Team wise, I guess I've seen uh, a lot of people pick Boston to be really, really good. I mean, every everybody. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, a lot of people. I guess I've seen a lot of people predict the fall off for years now, yeah. but it, it feels like maybe, just maybe, this is yeah. the time where it actually happens. You don't want to. We were just talking about Swayman, but it's like now that he did get his contract, is, yeah. Is he gonna, you know, stay there, be good, or is he gonna kind of? be casual and be it's definitely gonna be an adjustment to play yeah in, an interesting team an interesting lineup um you know obviously they bring in Lindholm that'll help but I don't know it just feels like uh the division's good this year the everybody was improving in the division and it's like I don't know how, how many teams are gonna be in that playoff race in yeah. that division so yeah it's awkward because I have them in my Stanley Cup final yeah exactly so that, is that yeah. overrated like, Honestly, yeah. <laughs> yeah no no yeah that, that's a we'll good see. Pick. I, I mean, think I think definitely like I think last year no, I think honestly, like the t- heading into the 2023 season, that was the year where everybody's like, this is where Boston finally falls off. And then with they the set Marshan the points like, record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. when McAvoy and Marshawn were both like, Exa- that's what out, I thought. Out Maybe I'm just a hater. So, but yeah. I- <laughs> no, I mean, it's definitely got to happen at some point. I just think that, again, I hate the Lindholm. I hate the Zadorov trade. I think that's going to eventually lead to the downfall of the Bruins in like three to four years. But, but right heading now, into next season, yeah, okay. DeBrusque for Lindholm, I think is about an equal, equal swap. And Zadorov is definitely like peak Bruin. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, like you still six have six, obviously one of the best beast. players in the NHL. Yeah, Kostanak, yeah, and, and the center depth scares me, but now yeah. you can like roll three of Lindholm, Zaka, and Coyle, which again, not a legit first line center, but that's a pretty solid second like, line center. All that's good, a good like, third like, line center. Like, 
center by committee can at least work versus last year. Just Coil and Zaka wasn't nearly good enough. Mm -hmm. And I think a guy like, uh, this has really turned into me saying that they're extremely underrated, but when looking at it, uh, yeah, I think, I think Trent Frederick and uh, and Paul Pontreau is going to be very good next season for the Boston Bruins. In terms of my overrated, it probably would be the Detroit Red Wings, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to be basic and pick them. I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Oh. Uh, I, I have them missing the playoffs. And again, I'm not saying like people are saying they're going to be like 105, 110 point team. And I do like what they did this offseason. That's like the crazy thing with this. I like the Gensel move. I just think that this team is a little bit too special teams reliant, especially power play okay. really carried them a decent amount last year. On top of the fact that Vasilevsky is a big question mark. He yeah, had like a fair. lumbar disc or something separated. Like I've talked to people, like my friends that played goalies back, goalie back in the day, says like if there's an injury that you want to avoid as a goaltender, it's that one. It's with the back. So as a result, I'm not saying he's going to be a 900 again, but I think people are penciling him in for like a 915 season yet again when that's not a lock by any stretch. And if they have like one injury next year, yeah, somebody goes down. It's huge. Kucherov like, goes down or yeah, like the the defense defense core. It doesn't really move me that much. I'm obviously lower on Hedman than others. McDonough was a good ad, but he's also like 34, 35 yeah, years old. Even, yeah. Like he, he could fall off. So in looking at them again, I think that they're definitely gonna be in the playoff race. I'm not going to be ridiculous, but I would pick some other teams in the Eastern conference. Definitely the Islanders. I went with the senators. I always go with the fucking senators, but when looking at it, I am not that high in, on the, uh, Tampa Bay. Lakers. I mean, even the Vasilevsky thing is like last year. I mean, the expectations were high for him, but he just yeah. didn't, he didn't play as well as a lot of people maybe thought he could have or should have. And then you get to the playoffs and they just get ransacked by a yeah. better Florida team. And it's just like, okay. They bring in Gensel, obviously, for Stamkos. And that feels like a solid upgrade at this point in their, you know, Stamkos' yeah. career. But I, I could see it happening. I do agree with the injuries. It feels like they don't have the depth that a lot of yeah. these other teams have. So one of these bigger injuries and it's, it's like... It's really rough. And yeah, even Vasilevsky, like... Johansson as their backup is like pretty dog shit. Yeah, so like, so, yeah, like, yeah like it is. Injury and again, I don't want any injuries. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not saying anything like that. But like, if they're a candidate, like if one of their top three players out of the other team in the Eastern Conference, they'd be affected the most. Maybe because they just have such a good top three. But when looking at it, like one of their core pieces getting hurt would just be so goddamn massive yeah. in terms of that team losing so we're also going to give out some hot takes just before the season. We're going to have more weekly segments once we start going. We just don't really have that much to talk about right now. We're going to rip some hot takes. Matt, what's your hot take? Uh, my hot take is that Jack Eichel is going to have maybe 90 points. Uh, I don't know. He hasn't. If he's I, healthy, that's, yeah, that he should. That should be the expectation. Yeah, yeah. I, okay, so maybe it's not as hot of a take, but um, just looking at his numbers, it's like obviously this guy is a, you know, a playoff performer, mm -hmm. and he's still one of the better players in the NHL, but it just feels like he can hit that like next level. Yeah. And I feel like he's getting to a point now, You know, the neck shouldn't be bothering him, nothing should yeah. be bothering him. It's a it's a Knights team that kind of needs him to to do that kind of kind of mm -hmm. stuff and score some goals. So I'm gonna say Jack Eichel has a pretty good year. Maybe yeah, gets himself in some. Yeah, I think people forget like what was it before the COVID shutdown? Like he was like yeah, the Sabres were out of a playoffs, but he still got like a shit ton of heart votes. He was yeah, on pace yeah, for like exactly. forty five and, and, and sixty or something like the that. The workload is obviously. I mean Vegas. Yeah compared to those Buffalo teams, has way more scorers. Yeah, and it doesn't need Eichel to score every, every yeah. play, but it's like. They they might need him, dude. This, they, this no, year, this year yeah, it, it, they, they are pretty the past, shallow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, yeah. Could, he could, if he was something was nagging him, he could like take like three exactly. goddamn weeks off. But no, I, I definitely now they need him to take that step. I feel like yeah, for me, I'm sticking with another Canadian. No, not a Canadian. What am I saying? Another center <laughs> that went. No, he went third overall. What am I saying? But I'm going to go with Adam Fantilli to score at least 65 points. I think he's poised that for a is... breakout. We've already seen it. Boone Jenner is now going to be out for a long time. Dmitry Vornikov, who was like a really good rookie last year for them, he's also out. If you're talking about like opportunity, nobody's going to have more opportunity than Adam Fantilli last year. And he had 27 points last year, but it was in 49, 49 games, which was around 45 point pace. So he played around only 15 minutes, 16 minutes a night last year. They're just going to let him run. Like, I, I, would, I don't I mean, see, like, I guess Sean Monahan's there, but like, yeah. if it, the long term vision, you got to be playing Fantilli a shit ton next year. And again, I think that this kid was a special talent coming out of uh, school. If he's on that first power play, if he's on that first line, I think you move Monahan yeah, yeah. out over to the wing or something like that. I think that he's really going to pop. Columbus is still going to stink. They're probably, especially after these injuries, they're probably not my pick to be the worst team in the entire NHL. But you could, if, if Adam Fantilli, if his shots hit in, you could see like a serious breakout. It's an exciting player, right? So it's yeah. just like you want you want that to be uh, the reality. I hope it is, but you're right. I mean, I agree. If he's getting power play minutes and playing all these minutes a night, it's like hopefully yeah. he takes a, a massive step already, and that'd be awesome for Columbus' sake. I right, rip another hot take. 
Uh, I was gonna. I'm gonna say that I think uh, the San Jose Sharks are not gonna be a bottom three team. Bottom three. Not bottom three. Not bottom three in the NHL. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's hear it. Let's hear it. I think. Um, I actually think that the goaltending duo isn't going to be horrible. Blackwood and, and VTech. I, I don't. I mean, Vanacek was pretty bad last year. We know that. But mm-hmm. uh, hopefully, he he a little bit better. I think uh, obviously Macklin. Hopefully, uh, it's, hopefully he has like a Bedard type season. That'd be yeah. awesome for them. And I just. I don't know. I feel like there are going to be some other teams that maybe disappoint more than the Sharks. So I don't know. I, again, I don't think they're going to be good. I don't think they're they're going to be in a playoff race. But I, I don't think I don't see them finishing as like the worst team in the NHL. Uh, yeah, or bottom three. I, team, I yeah. think bottom. Yeah, bottom, bottom three is definitely interesting. I could see. I could see Columbus. I could see Chicago. Chicago's yeah. So like bad. that's two right there, and then you just need one more. Yeah. And out of it. Who would be that? I mean, I'm high on the Ducks. So yeah, I definitely. I, don't I mean, think I think the, the Ducks, Flames could be. Flames. Flames could could be brutal. Bad. Yeah, yeah. I've already talked about it. Under 81 and a half points, that's like my lock. I can't say, I don't know if I'm allowed to give out fucking extra not sponsor or anything, but like hammer that. That's my mortal I don't lock. Think, and of I, the I, I know you kind of like season. The, the Ducks, but yeah. I don't, I don't. No, I, yeah, I think the Ducks, a lot of things need to go right in terms of players taking that next step, but I'm not really yeah, sold on Dostal now. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. I mean, Blackwood and uh, Vanatrick. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's a bit of a, it's, that's why it's a hot take, yeah. though. It's yeah. a bit of a hot No, take. no, I like I it. I don't think they're going to be in Vesna talks or anything, yeah. but I think it could be like a serviceable duo. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with mine. I'm gonna say Jeff Skinner 35 and 35 next season for the okay. Edmonton Oilers. You just look at it. That'd be awesome. Going with Dry said he's not gonna have that number one power play time like he did in Buffalo when he had a great season in 2023. But I think this dude is like just so talented offensively. Doesn't play like a defense that might piss off some Edmonton Oilers fans. But in terms of the potential of playing on Dry said even playing on that second power play. He's going to be a monster. Like he is going to be an absolute monster for only three million dollars. That was a insane steal. Them actually getting Drysaddle, and I think Drysaddle is also going to probably have like 120, 125 points, considering the fact that he's gone from like Fogel and Evander Kane on mm-hmm. his goddamn line. Like that is a massive upgrade. Yeah. So I think that this Edmonton Oilers second line is going to be scary. Arvidsson, I'd say like. 65 points or something like that, like sniffing around there. That's what he was before last season with the LA Kings, like year in and year out. So I'm very high in that Edmonton Oilers second line in terms of guys popping off. I actually kind of like that. I mean, Skinner, Skinner. I could see 40 and 40. He's always been the goal scorer. I mean, even in Buffalo when like the Sabres fans were hating on him with the contract and stuff, he's still scoring goals. So it just feels like with a high powered offense in Edmonton that he might be able to, I could see that happening for sure. All right. Final, final hot take. Uh, I'm going to go back to kind of what we've talked about a little bit, but I'm going to say, I think Jake Ottinger has a career year Yeah, and I think maybe he's in Vesna talks, maybe he doesn't win it, but he's in some Vesna talks and gets himself mm-hmm. a, a nice bag. I mean, he knows what's at stake yeah. now. Obviously. Yeah. Contract year is big. Yeah. And the stars are a really good team, obviously. And I think he can kind of step up. His, I mean, we've seen him step up in, in big moments, that Calgary series, even, yeah. even though they lost. I mean, he was insane. He so, was the only reason. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think sometimes you only get one shot at a big contract and he's going to play out. He's going to ball out. Yeah, no, he has, he has everything in his direction. The defense score scares me a little bit there. Yeah, but like, it's not amazing. They're gonna, he's going to rack up a shit ton of wins, probably yeah, finish exactly. top three in the edge. Like, goals against will be below 2.5 or something like that. he should be playing like that. quite a few games, Yeah, too, who's I mean. their backup? Uh, the Smith. Yeah, they got uh, Casey, Casey DeSmith. DeSmith. Hey. He fell off a cliff at the end of the year for the Vancouver Canucks. Oh, so, like, he might have to play a lot of goddamn games, and as a result... Gonna win a lot of games. Not gonna lot. Not gonna let up a lot of goals. I definitely like that a decent amount. My final hot take is going. Actually, I just blanked. My final hot take is the Toronto Maple Leafs goalie tandem is gonna finish top three in save percentage. Wow. Usually you're a Leafs hater. So I think Joseph Wool is very underrated if he can stay healthy. And Stolarz last year was better per game than uh, Sergei Bobrovsky. Obviously, Bobrovsky played like 58 games compared mm-hmm. to Stolarz's 24 or something like that. But when looking at the tandem, I think that their defense score is actually going to be pretty solid. And yeah, I think Joseph Wolf, when healthy, can give you like a 914, 915, as well as maybe I should go like top five. I think that's still pretty hot takes. Top five, yeah, yeah, top five, top three. Still, yeah. yeah, because Sorokin, the Shostarkin quick. You have like the elite Sorokin, level. Yeah, yeah, like the, the, then... Those two tandems should be better. But I think the, the Leafs goaltending, it's not going to be an actual top five because they're both like just like, good good goalies not great but when looking at it i think next year this leafs team in terms of goals against is going to surprise a lot of people but speaking of goalie tandems we have a little bit of a game to play speaking of the jeremy swayman let me pull it up real quick the jeremy swayman tandem with corpusalo is now locked in we're gonna do a would you rather swayman and corpusalo i'm gonna give you some goalie tandems and we're just gonna rifle through it and give our personal takes up first olmark and forsberg swayman's former 
Yeah, I'm taking uh, Swayman and Corpus Allo there. Really? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, even though I mentioned that maybe Swayman in that contract year kind of falls off, like he's. Are we going this year? Or are we going this year? No, yeah, not okay. not like whatever their contracts are. Right? I would I would still take Swayman and Corpus Allo. Yeah, we're, we're not even factoring in co- contracts. Okay, so just Zolmark players. makes five million dollars. I yeah, clearly go. I would then. still probably take Swayman and Corpus Allo. I don't think Corpus Allo is that bad of a backup at all. Um, and yeah, I think, I no, think, he he was good as in Columbus, whatever last year. Yeah, and, and in LA. I don't know. I think Swayman's uh, still going to be... I, I do think maybe he has a little bit of a down year, but I still think he's pretty good. Allmark, on the other hand, I don't know. Ottawa's always a question mark to me. It feels like you have ex- expectations for them, and then they don't yeah. do well. So we'll see what kind of year they have in Ottawa. But I'm taking Swayman and Corbis I'm going Allmark and Forsberg. Okay. I think I think Forsberg's kind of underrated. He needs to stay healthy, but like when it was a 2023, he was actually really good for the Ottawa Senators. On top of Allmark, he has that contract here. Swayman's mm-hmm. paid. That's so true. I think Allmark is, is, is going to rightfully so really be balling out for a bag. It's close. I think that's probably the yeah, closest one that we're going to have in this, but I'm going to slightly go Allmark and Forsberg. Next up, uh, we got Markstrom and Allen. Jacob Markstrom, Jake Allen. That's a little New bit Jersey tough. Devils. I mean, that one's really difficult because Markstrom feels like last year was so bad, but, but, but it's like... It, <laughs> well, no, last year was good. No, two, two, two years, years, years ago two years was bad. Ago was bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like it, he was it, like an 892. It feels like Markstrom has the potential to be a, like an elite level goalie and especially yeah. with the Devils and such a great roster and we've talked about the depth. And Jake Allen, I feel like he's a pretty service. I'm actually going to take Markstrom and Allen. I think. Oh! Yeah, I think I'm going to take Markstrom and Allen. Yeah. Just because I feel like their stats could also be inflated because of how good the Devils are. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, like, like I, I might bet on, like, them to have a higher save percentage, but, but I think actual, I would rather... Like, if we're going into a playoff have, series, yeah, maybe, like, like... Well, yeah, if you're going to a playoff series, you always start one yeah, guy. But, yeah, in yeah, terms yeah. of the tandem, I think I'm going to go with Swayman in Corpus Allen, just because... Markstrom is just so inconsistent. Yeah, like, I, it's I a question know. mark. It's a big exactly. question mark. Like, if both of them are at their A game, but I guess Swayman also could take another step, I'd probably go Markstrom and uh, Allen. Allen also has a little bit of question mark considering he's like 34 years old at this point. But um, I'm going to go with Swayman just because I still think Swayman is better than Markstrom heading into next season. We got Logan Thompson and Charlie Lindgren. You're very high in the Washington Capitals. Yeah, I'm going to lean Swayman and Corpus Allo still. I actually do like Charlie Lindgren a lot. I mean, last year was obviously like a phenomenal year for him. Probably has a statistical fall off a little bit just because last year was such a good year. I think acquiring Logan Thompson was probably a pretty solid move. Yeah, um, three, two second round picks. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a good McCrimmon, move. He'll yeah. be he'll be fine, but uh, overall, I think... Uh, Swayman and Corpus Allo, probably, uh, I Yeah, I, I would agree on that. Just just neither of those guys are fully proven. Exactly, Thompson, yeah. only playing around like 40 games in Vegas when Vegas has been so good the last couple of years. I guess actually the same thing could apply for Swayman. But uh, when looking at it, Lindgren has only like one year one, of being like, yeah, like, like a, a legit like a guy. Starter, Rest of it was yeah. all just like an okay backup. I would definitely go with Swayman and Corpus Allo. And then lastly, we got Vasilevsky and Jonas Johansson. Jonas Johansson? I don't know. I'm taking Swayman and Corpus Allo, I would say. Ooh. Just because... I mean, Johansson, it's like, we don't know what we're going to get. Vasilevsky. I think, we, I think we know what we're going to get with Johansson. He's going to be bad, bro. Okay, so he's there you go. All year. right, so so <laughs> if he's a bad backup, then it's just like, I mean, I don't think Allen will be that bad. So Or not Allen, Corpus sorry, Corpus Allen. Uh, I don't think Corpus Allen will be that bad. And then Swayman Vasilevsky, like, I'm going to take Vasilevsky, but who knows? I mean, with the year he had last year, it could yeah. be not great again. Yeah, I, I'd agree on that. Going back to Markstrom, I think Vasilevsky at his best would be better than Swayman. Yeah. But, but we you, don't know if that Vasilevsky still exists. Exactly, like, exactly. genuinely. He's kind of so a question mark. I yeah, mean, and, and, and Johansson is just, like, horrible. He, uh, he was on Fairbanks last year. He had to start out, like, as the number one guy. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, played, like, 14 out of their first 16 yeah. games. Like, it was situation. ridiculous. Yeah, but I would definitely go with Swayman and Corpus Allo heading into next year. I think Corpus Allo is not really going to turn it around, though, if I'm going to be honest. But, yeah, that's that's the first episode in the books. I think we only went for, like, not that long, gonna be honest. But uh, <laughs> right. we'll, we'll, as the season starts, as we have more talk about, we're not going to be giving out rapid hot takes right now. My overall thoughts, you can go watch the other YouTube videos on that. But yeah, well, what, what do you think? How do you think this went? <laughs> uh, I thought it was great. No, I thought it was great. Um, yeah, again, like you said, I mean, he's got all his predictions for yeah. literally, literally everything you could ever yeah. think about is on his yeah, page. Yeah, we, so. we thought about doing like a full like standings prediction, but, but I was it's like, like, this guy already we, has We it. could just input like my old videos yeah, so, and shit like that. Um, definitely once the season starts, there's obviously going to be new storylines that you probably won't even get to talk about. Yeah. So um, we'll definitely cover that. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna probably have like fan submitted, followers submitted, like questions, takes and stuff like that. We really want to get you guys involved. We have a bunch of other like longer form video stuff coming out soon. We just wanted to get this out before the start of the season. This really came together in the last like week or two. So 
the, the, ba- the sets are going to get better, the overall background and all that stuff. But thank you guys so much for watching. Leave your thoughts, constructive criticism in the comments below. This is yeah, not please, by no please. means a finished yeah. product. We want, but up, I, we want to yeah, get better. No, yeah. we're, 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 we're excited to get this underway. And yeah, we'll be seeing the next one. Most likely going to be dropping every like Monday or Tuesday probably. So yeah, we'll be seeing you in the next one. Peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>